In this tutorial, we will see how to make real-time visuals using ManMapper. We will try to recreate this visual inspired by Daily Minimal number 574. To achieve this, we need to create a shader with parameters, and then we can control them with the MIDI protocol. The music can control and animate the visuals. The first part is to set up our material. Select the input view by clicking the left bar icon just below the toolbar. This will allow us to focus only on our material. In the code editor, create a new material by clicking the plus icon. A material is a generative animated visual composed of the fragment shader and a vertex shader. In this tutorial, we will only use the fragment shader. Select the empty template and name your material whatever you want. Here, the default code should appear in the editor. A new material has been added to your materials in the right panel. Now, create a new quad by clicking the square icon on the top left side. The material should be applied to the surface and appear in the view. If not, select the quad and right click on your material then click Apply Media to select its surface. Now you are ready to code your reactive shader. Next, it's time to create our shader. Basically, a shader is a little program executed by the GPU, your graphic card. Here, written in GLSL, a programmation language, a part of the OpenGL specifications, it will allow to determine the final color of each rendered pixel on the screen. At the start of the code, we can see that part of the text is read out and commented. This part is a JSON header and can directly influence the MadMapper interface. The interface of your shader is shown just below the input media panel. We can see the name, credits and the default speed slider. On the info icon, we have additional information like the description, tags, paths, etc. Try to modify the credits, description, tags of your shader, and the interface should be updated. The input fields are the uniforms of your shader. These are data passed from the CPU to the GPU. They are only read by the shader. Inputs are composed of a label, this is a name displayed in the MadMapper interface. A name, this is a variable name used in your code. A type, which can be float, boolean, integer, color, etc. The generators are objects with parameters. They can store value and the output is a floating point value. For example, the time is a value that we want to get each frame to animate our shader. The final color of each pixel is written by the material color for pixel function. It returns a vector form, so the red, green, blue and alpha channels are stored in it. These channels are normalized between 0 and 1. Our code will be contained in this function. For example, try to put vec4100 and 1 in the final line of your shader. This will display all pixels red. 255 for the red channel, 0 for the others, and some percent of opacity. To reproduce the daily minimal visual, we need to draw multiple circles and apply them a noise, which is less and less powerful depending on the Y position. Let's go. So first, we need to include the MAD SDF library to create basic shapes and the MyNoise library to easily generate a simplex noise function. Then, in the material color for pixel function, add the background color by creating a vector free and apply it to the final color. After this, we need to center the UVs. UVs are the coordinates of the current pixel. In fact, each frame the GPU will execute your shader on all pixels on the screen and determine their colors. We will use the position of the pixel to draw our shapes. By default, UVs are normalized between 0 and 1, but we will remap their positions between minus 0.5 and 0.5 to center them. 
Now it's time to draw our first circle. First we will define the radius. Here we will take 0 0.25. Then we create the shape of the circle with the circle function provided by the MADSDF library. It takes in arguments the position of the pixel and the radius of the circle. After that, we need to display our circle to the screen. Good news, the MADSDF library provides a fill and a stroke function. The stroke function takes four arguments in this order. The offset color, the border color, the shape and the stroke thickness. Let's add some noise to our circle. First, we need to add some inputs to change the frequency and the position of our noise. These sliders will help to refine the values later. Then, we need to make a noise gradient. In fact, there is less noise at the bottom of the visual than the top. To do this, we use the smooth step function, which releases the noise between 0.3 and 0.7 relative to the Y position of the pixel and the noise position we want. Then create our noise with the noise function given by the man noise library, which takes a vector free. We multiply this noise by our previous noise position variable to get a noise less and less powerful from top to bottom. Finally, we apply the noise to the circle shape. To generate more circles, we'll use a for loop. We'll define another input to change the number of circles drawn. Then we put our code into a for loop. This will create the number of circles defined by math circles count. To finish, we just have to offset the noise of each circle by adding the iteration to the time. And then we tweak our values like the stroke thickness to 0 0.0006, for example, and play with our input values. Thanks for watching.